Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, a definitive answer as to what goes first on a scone. Now, let's get into it. If you're new here, make sure to hit follow. Six people are still missing, and one has been confirmed dead after a suspected tornado sank a luxury yacht off the coast of Sicily. Amongst those missing is British tech tycoon Mike Lynch and his 18-year-old daughter. At the time of recording this podcast, a search and rescue effort is still underway, as well as an investigation into what caused the incident. But experts say the risk of extreme weather in the area was high at the time. Here's the sound from CCTV footage of weather conditions in Ponticello around the same time, which shows heavy wind and rain battering the area, even shaking the camera. Clip there courtesy of Nino Monado. Storms and heavy rainfall have swept down Italy in recent days after weeks of scorching heat. Meteorologists say the high temperatures heated the Mediterranean Sea to record levels, raising the risk of extreme weather conditions, including storms. Now, researchers have identified specific locations on Mars where the majority of Martian meteorites most likely originate in a scientific first. With a combination of sort of methods coming together, we've been able to narrow down essentially and identify, we think, five of the main impact craters that have delivered Martian meteorites to Earth from Mars. That's Professor Chris Hurd from the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Alberta in Canada. He worked on the study, which he says is the culmination of seven years of work and international collaboration with scientists from around the world. Nature has a way of delivering rocks from Mars to us. It involves something large enough to hit the surface of Mars such that rocks near the point of the impact of that object get accelerated fast enough to leave Mars gravity. We've understood that these rocks come from Mars. There's something like 200 now uh, rocks from meteorites that have fallen all over the Earth in different places. And what we've been able to do for the first time is to link groups of those meteorites to specific impact events on Mars to, and basically to specific locations. The team have traced the meteorites to five impact craters within two volcanic regions on the Red Planet called Tharsis and Elysium. Professor Hood, who is also part of the Mars Perseverance rover team with NASA, says until we are able to bring back samples from the Red Planet, these Martian meteorites are the next best thing for scientific research. I'll tell you, this project has been in a folder called The Next Big Thing on my computer for seven years because <laughs> I really feel like it has been the next big thing for us to be able to say, here's this amazing group of rocks that we know come naturally from Mars. If only we could figure out where they're from, we could actually start to do other really great science. We could say, okay, what's well, from this area or this part or this volcano? The study could help lay the groundwork for further research into the history and geology of the red planet. It potentially opens up the door to be able to say for everything, the chronology of Mars, for when things happen on Mars is all relative with the sort of uh, the cratering and history of the moon sort of extended or extrapolated to that of Mars based on how many craters on a given surface, etc. There's a lot of assumptions in that. And one of the main things that we need is to have samples from a specific location where we can say, OK, we think that that lava flow or that surface is 300 million years old. But if we could have a sample from there to test that, that would allow us to calibrate that or check that. The study is published in the journal Science Advances. A rocket engine exploded during a test at Shetland Spaceport yesterday evening due to a reported anomaly. The test was carried out by German company Rocket Factory Augsburg, who hoped to eventually launch the UK's first vertical rocket into orbit. The scheduled nine-engine test was part of a number of trials due to be carried out before progressing to launch. RFA said no one was injured in the explosion and the launch pad had been saved, and that they will return to regular operations as soon as possible. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, finally, a definitive scientific answer as to whether it's jam or cream first on a scone. To stay up to date with all the latest tech and science news, just hit follow during the break. Welcome back. A study suggests that latter stage solar flares could be more dangerous for Earth's communication than previously thought. 
It's been established that the first wave of a solar flare, a sudden burst of energy from the sun, can knock out GPS signals and trigger global radio blackouts. However, new research from Queen's University Belfast and others now suggests this latter phase, known as EUV, could be just as threatening to the Earth's satellites, with more energy over a longer period of time. This means it could have a prolonged impact on a part of the upper atmosphere called the ionosphere, which satellites need to send signals around the planet so it could disrupt communication completely. Researchers found that personalised brain stimulation could reduce Parkinson's symptoms. The study led by the University of California, San Francisco, suggests that a brain implant can help people with Parkinson's disease deal with movement problems during the day and insomnia at night. The device, which is controlled by brain activity, could provide personalised continual and improved treatment for the symptoms in some people with the condition. The treatment works with medications that Parkinson's patients take to manage their symptoms, giving less stimulation when the drug is active and more stimulation as the drug wears off, to prevent stiffness. And finally, it's been a classic British debate for many years, but scientists have finally found a definitive answer as to whether you should put cream or jam first on scones. Researchers from the Centre for Industrial Rheology, which conducts testing into the behaviour of materials, recently assessed the spreadability of clotted cream and jam. There's long been a rivalry between people in Cornwall, who believe jam should go first, then cream, and people in Devon, who say the opposite. And the answer? The findings revealed that clotted cream is more rigid than jam, meaning it's harder to spread on the scone. So it should go on first to provide a good strong base for the soft jam to then be applied on top of it. So there you have it then, the Devon method is right. You're up to date, come back at 4pm for the Standard Podcast for all the latest news and analysis. Tech and Science Daily will be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.